What's up and welcome to another episode of the Grindline Podcast. You're listening to episode 239. I am here tonight with Ryan. Uh, Tyler is having automotive issues, apparently, that we just learned about five minutes ago. You know, five minutes before we hit the record button, but that's apparently happening. I am back from vacation. Ryan, how are you doing? Uh, well, I'm not back from vacation, so I'm a little bit jealous. But uh, outside of that, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, I went up north to uh, to Indian River for the weekend. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful up there. Kind of hot, but beautiful. Windy a day. Um, but then you get into, you know how it goes. You go away for like a weekend and the whole time you're thinking about all the stuff you're missing at work and how much stuff you're going to have to make up as soon as yeah. you get there. So I'm back to work. And I always take, I recommend everybody do this. The day you come, you take the day after you come home off as well. Just so oh, you yeah. can decompress. You, you need to reset, get some laundry going and not yeah. have to, you know, you can. Yeah, anything. Yeah. So I did that and I go back tomorrow and I'm like, there's a lot of stuff going on at work. I've got to, I'm going to come back to like 200 and something emails and it's going to be insane. But Ugh, it was a great vacation gross. and I nice. decompressed and I sat on the lake. Uh, yeah, the kids go, they like camping, they slip in the camper really well, which is, which is really impressive to me, but it was good. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> But I'm back nice. and we have a show uh, as much of a show as we have, because like, again, yeah, no we got news. something We're, we are officially at the worst point of the off season, I think. Yeah, it's like we're wait. It's the wait for September. It's the wait for uh, training camp to come and see what happens there and then then roll into preseason. And it just it drags. But I ran some polls on Twitter. So we're going to talk about Ooh. the results of some of the Twitter polls. Uh, I ran, I pulled some stats. We're going to talk about players we think need to take a next step or need to show some kind of improvement. Not that they were bad, but that we, we want to see what they can keep doing. And, and we want to see them move forward. Mainly focusing on current wings, not, yeah. not any of the new guys. So let's let's get that clarity out there because people like to snip, snipe that stuff a little bit now. So Yeah, we're not going to talk about Justin Hole. We're not going to talk about Jeff Petrie. We're going to talk about players who are on the roster last season and what they need to do going forward. But we're going to start with polls. So the first poll I ran, and it was based, eh, maybe it was the second poll I ran, but I'm going to do it in a different order. Based on the um, dumb tweet that we talked about last week, I ran a poll because they said, well, no Red Wings fans don't expect anything from their team and they think Eiserman's done a bad job. So I ran a poll that says a new poll emerges with the recent discourse. How would you grade the job Steve Eiserman has done in Detroit so far? It received 3,568 votes with 56.6% of the vote being a B and 34.6% of the vote being an A. Only wow. 7.8 was a C and 1% of trolls gave it a D to F. So I scrolled through the comments and I'm like, I wonder what's going on here. Where's the common thread? And the common thread is that we need to see what these draft picks are going to do. We need to mm -hmm. see what Mazer's going to do, what Wallander's going to do, what Johansson's going to do, even Edvinson are going to do at the NHL level before we can give Iserman an A. So they're like B leaning toward A to C to see how these prospects pan out, which I think is fair. No, I, I think any range within B is appropriate. And I, I, I we talked on freaking crispy bacon last, was it last week? And like the people that are just destroying him, I, I still can't wrap my head around it. I can, I can totally get a B to a C grade because for one, they're still not in the playoffs. Totally understandable. So if your bar is that and you're that keeps him at mediocre at best being Iserman, then I, I can respect that opinion. But to say that it's anything less, I mean, I've gone, I think, blue in the face talking about this at this point in hockey at, with this type of rebuild. You're you end up playing the long game much like you do with baseball, because some of these guys, very few, especially in baseball, come from either right out of college at 18, 19 and make it to the, to the big leagues. Like you're seeing several of these guys, maybe Riley Green, I think. When did he, did he hit at 20? He still yeah, had minor sure. league time before yep. he made it to the show. Bork, I mean, you could argue a little bit different, different route because of the college game. The college ball does help some of these guys get there a little bit quicker, but we don't necessarily have that same advantage in hockey sometimes because you well, see I mean some of these... I think the college route for hockey is can be the same, too, because you see these high level prospects go to college for a couple of years and then go right into the NHL. 
Well, sure. But the point I was going to make in, in kind of like against that though, is the fact that you see so many guys, here's where I was going to get ready to kind of fight myself is that so many younger players in hockey make it in comparison to baseball. You're seeing those sub 21 year olds making NHL rosters on other teams. And then you see some of these Detroit fans and us included it really thinking, Hey, what, where's ours? You know what I mean? Where's Edvinson? Where's Casper? Where's Mazer? I get it. These, this is some recency bias, but it took Cider a couple of years. It took Raymond a couple of years. They're coming. That's, I think, the important key factor here. And like you just mentioned with a lot of the comments that are out there, that BC range, if these guys start hitting it off, if we see a breakout season for Raymond, who I know we're going to talk about, does that, in, that improve the grade? It's going to hopefully get you some wins. You're going to see some things change on the ice where he's a true impact player for this team, especially in a top six role. Um, but I, it's a BC, I think, is completely fair. You can go either way, depending on which way you want to focus on in terms of prospect development, team progression, and so on and so forth. Yeah, a lot of people in here uh, mentioned like it's it, you can't see really any rookie making the the roster out of camp now it's harder to see a defensive prospect make the roster out of camp it's right. hard to see someone really earn that spot because it is it is so jammed up but then other people go the other way and mention like look at the situation he inherited from ken holland and what he's been able to do with that situation how he's able to turn around uh, having a contract like justin Ablocator, getting rid of franz nielsen, nielsen uh, yep. moving moving out uh holland ken holland picks and ken holland players rebuilding the entire prospect pool from the ground up what he has been able to do literally yeah what he's been able to do earns him that higher the higher grade even though they haven't made the playoffs yet and i think like that's and it kind of leads into the next poll will the detroit red wings make the stanley cup playoffs in 2023-24 this one had 2485 votes with 57.7 percent saying yes so i mean it's over 50 percent of the 57.7% 57.7% of people that took the poll said the Red Wings will make the playoffs this year. So wow. there's a lot of hope. So this is where this poll is going to fight the other one. If this poll does not come true, so if the Red Wings miss the playoffs, those Eisenman grades, I think, are going to go down. Now, should they? That's really subjective. I, I think that the goal this season should be playoffs. That should absolutely be the goal. You went out and you again, you made more moves. You made the team deeper. You improved the defense. You've got rookies in another or You've got, got young guys in another year. You've got hopefully another guy we're going to talk about, an Andrew Kopp, who has hopefully brought himself back and is back to form. You picked up to bring it. That's your huge move. That's your offensive infusion into the lineup. I think they can make the playoffs. I think this team has what it takes to. It's going to be hard. Absolutely. Hold are on. we gonna are we going to bank on other teams also not improving where it maybe doesn't look like they've improved their roster very very much, but maybe their core team has improved? It's it's gonna be tough. But mm-hmm. I think they can do it, and it seems like the fan base also thinks they can do it. And I think that's important. Like if you, you need the guys that are currently on this roster outside of just your prospects to improve. You need a Raymond to to get better, you need a cider to continue to get better. You need Larkin to continue to get better. You hope that Debrinket has a bounce back season and continues to get better. All these things are going to be extremely important, but this is also what you're going to be looking at with Ottawa, with Buffalo, uh, Montreal. They're just kind of there. So yeah, it is what it is. But these are, these are all teams. And we talked about Buffalo, how close they were. They missed out on the playoffs by one freaking point. Florida, they're going to be much of the same. Boston, you would assume in Tampa, should be taking a step back. But Tampa, I think, has enough firepower to keep them at a truly elite level. Boston, arguably, too. Um, Until they don't do it, I'm not going to really think otherwise. And then Toronto, they're not going anywhere because they haven't. I mean, they have to get under. They still have to get cap compliant. But that's a different subject altogether. Um, But, yeah, it's got to be one of the more difficult deep divisions at this point which is great because watching Detroit playing with Ottawa Buffalo coming into the end of the season that could be a hell of a playoff race and a fun one because there's a lot of young good talent on all those all these teams yeah it'll be fun the worst part of it is going to be the the social media interaction i believe 
because that is where the third poll came in. Oh. And it's simply because of literally all of the the people that have yelled stupid stuff at us online for the past two months. I, I did a poll that says which Atlantic Division fan base is currently the most annoying. The Senators, the Leafs, the Sabres, or the Canadians. Up until earlier today, the Did you the put Senators the Sabres on there just because you couldn't put all the Canadian teams on there? Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I did the Senators. Uh, the Senators at 44.7% currently. The Leafs at 45.4%. Oh, the they Sabres took the lead. They did uh, earlier it. today. But so far, it's got 4,524 votes. Um, the Sens fans, and there's a couple on Twitter that will not stop. Um, have been really only because they beat us this season twice in those two games. Two games. Yeah. You yeah. won two. Congrats. One, two <laughs> regular season games. I'm saying this closer for the Sens fans into the microphone. You didn't get a banner. You didn't get anything. You won two fucking games. I think that's what's going to make it interesting going into this season is is the banter online. For for better or for worse, I guess because yeah, the Sens fans have been absolutely. Beat me out in my little beat me on that rant, by the way. Well, anger <laughs> anybody. And they've they've been um, really insufferable because they. I think don't get that why. Beat, well, beating us twice apparently won them the Stanley Cup. Uh, they also say you guys took out Debr- Alex Debrinket. He sucks. Uh, he we got Dominic Kubalik, who was like your third best player, so he's clearly better than Debrinket. And I don't know. It's a lot of false equivalency and a a lot of talk for literally their team winning absolutely nothing ever. No. And that's, I think, the most annoying part. Like if you would have made the playoffs and won a round or a series and done something crazy with it. You know what? Have a day. I don't care. Go for it. It sucks more for us because you actually, yep, booty hold us in the regular season, which you did. Detroit got embarrassed. And I think it was actually a good thing because of the trades that they were able to make and what they ended up, ended up going into for the offseason. But, like, it came out of nowhere. Like, yeah. it, it, just because they, and I don't even want to say that they ended the wing season because it was trending already horribly that direction. Were they in a, still a decent spot at that point? Yeah, they could have turned, Detroit still could have turned it around. But Eisenman's like, all right, I got re confirm or reconfirmation of what this team actually is based on this performance. And it is what it is. Like, congratulations. You won two games and you won them handily. They've got a young, good team. Ottawa does. There's no doubt about it, but their fan base has made it impossible to actually think that they're fun to watch, which is amazing because Toronto took over the lead for this poll and they have been winning things. They finally, well, let me rephrase that. They finally got out of the first round of the playoffs. But their fans, you would think they would have won the last several cups, and they haven't won since 67, which you can't even hang a hat on a Stanley Cup if you're not a Senators fan. So there's that, too. Yeah, you'd think that um, for being such a boisterous fan base that they wouldn't have the eighth lowest attendance in the entire league. Uh, only no. ones that have a lower Do attendance. They really? Than- only ones that have lower attendance are the Panthers, Sabres, Devils, Ducks, Jets, Sharks, and Coyotes. Is that based on total number or percentage? Aver- average attendance at an Ottawa Senators game last season was 16,757. What's their um, arena hold? Wow, Habs had 21,000. The Wings came in fourth at 18.8. I like that. Well, considering that in... Let's see, their highest season, 2007-2008, they had an average attendance of 19,821. Oh, Ottawa's got an attendance per hockey reference of 18.6, or their capacity is 18.652. I guess what we'll end this part with is uh, if all 12 Sens fans could quit yelling at us online, that would be fantastic. Um, let's let's see you get to the playoffs before you start running your mouth. So I think we're going to uh, take a quick break. A quick commercial break for a word from DraftKings before we get into the second part of our episode, which is player improvements. We're going to take a look at who did what last season and where they need to go going forward. So we'll be right back in just one minute after a word from DraftKings. New customers, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code THPN. Bet just $5 to score $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's code THPN 
only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-H-O-P-E-N-Y or text H-O-P-E-N-Y. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, Kansas, in West Virginia, gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. All games regulated by West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance, one boost per eligible game, opt-in required, max bet $50, 10 plus legal required for 100% boost. Eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions apply. Even if you're not going on vacation, summer's all about a vacation state of mind. Whether I want to listen to my Spotify playlists on repeat or just need to retreat inside my own head for a bit, I love creating my own summer soundtrack by popping in my Raycon wireless earbuds. There's so much going on all summer. Sometimes you need some upbeat music to pump you up before you see people or to stay calm with some guided meditation. Right now, I'm just listening to podcasts on my walks downtown when I get lunch at work, and it's just really helping me keep my composure to get to that giant list of emails. Let me tell you right now, Raycons are the best way to listen. Use earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation, and awareness mode. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life, including eight hours of playtime, so you can listen to what you want, when you want, for a really long time. They come with custom gel tips for the most comfortable in-ear fit and start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And Raycons come with a 30-day happiness guarantee, so you can't really lose. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. Grindline podcast listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash THPN. That's buyraycon.com slash THPN to save 15% on Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash THPN. And we're back and we are going to talk about players that are going to, that are going to, I'm not going to say need to, they're going to. This is the uh, this is the like GLP the guarantee. You, they are going to take a step forward. Oh God, I don't think you should trademark that or put that on anything. The GLP guarantee. Yeah, no, I mean because it it's got a good go ring to it. Way. It does. It does sound good. However, the moment we start saying it and people are like you fucking idiots, <laughs> it's, it's, we're gonna say it's gonna go down. No. but we're gonna start with one that I, I everyone can agree on, and I'm gonna give. I'm gonna hopefully give some stats. And, and a little bit of information that will calm people's nerves on this one. We're going to start with Andrew Kopp. So, and the, the tale of two seasons is what we're really going to talk about with Andrew Kopp. In 2022, 23, and 82 games played, he had nine goals and 33 assists for 42 points. In his career, he has 565 games played with 91 goals, 153 assists for 244 points. Now, Andrew Kopp, people are upset, still upset, even after we've told them a million times core surgery is a big deal, like it takes a long time to come back from, and you're not 100% even throughout that season. You need a lot of rest, but people are still going to complain. So what I pulled were the charts. Speaking um, of, hold on, really quick, I really hope yeah. people went and saw the retweet for the uh, the Dr. Hockey podcast. Yeah, go watch where it. Where they talked about that stuff because it, it was – extremely insightful to hear that's the details behind the injuries and how these guys come back from stuff that they're not ready to come back from. Yeah, it was a really good one and we retweeted it. Yeah. So go ahead and go uh, listen to that. It was a really great conversation with doctors who know a lot about injuries and how they Dr. affect J, players Dr. Performance. Jason. So Andrew Kopp, his J fresh card uh, all the way through last season, he is now 29 years old. The projected war of 28% EV offense of 48 EV defense of 37 uh, his higher numbers are his PK. He's a great penalty killer at 71%. He's uh, got A1 per 60 of 67%. What he needs to bump up, however, are the EV offense and EV defense numbers as well as the finishing. Uh, you can see on the little JFresh chart that he had a pretty steep decline from 21-22 to 22-23, but that is because of the core surgery. Like, that's what it will do. Yeah. So. For those watching on YouTube, I'm also going to put up the uh, evolving hockey player cards for his season in 2022, 23, had an overall score of four with an offense of seven and a defense of 13. That's real scary. But if you look at the 21, 22 season, the season prior, he had an overall score of 81 
with an offense of 75 and a defense of 83. That is the player that Andrew Kopp is. That is the player that Andrew Kopp should be going forward. Yeah. Because he should now be fully recovered. Like, it, it shouldn't be an issue anymore. His core shouldn't really be an issue anymore. And he should be able to get back to this style of play because that is the kind of player that Iserman picked up. If we have the Andrew Kopp of two years ago, which all signs should point to that because he's coming in 100% healthy. We've had a full off season to get him back to where he needs to be. This team will be better. Is he going to score a lot of goals? No. Is he going to set up a lot of goals? Ideally. And I think that's going to be the important factor here. The more important piece outside of just getting the assist or being a, a true playmaking center is what he can do defensively. And as long as he is able to get mobile, and I think we've, again, talked about this thing over and over again, you could tell that it took until halfway through the season for him to look comfortable skating around the ice. We we now have that Andrew Kopp that will be healthy like when he was with Winnipeg in New York. Now, I get it. Were these different circumstances for the teams that he was playing on? Sure. But in Winnipeg, they weren't a consistent – they. They were good, but not great. You could argue that the Rangers were on that great cusp as well, but they're a playoff team. So he's got the experience of both, and Winnipeg has been consistently good. Now, you hope that those years that he's had behind him continue. Now, I get it. He's 29 years old. He's not getting any younger. But as long as he is a sound two-way forward, that's all you can ask for. And being healthy is the, the number one thing. So that's my fingers are crossed there. So in the in total sum of the 2021-22 season in 72 games played, he had 21 goals and 32 assists for 53 points. I mean, I guess, do you expect him to get back to that 20 plus goals? Do you expect 25 out of him? And seeing as who he's going to be playing with now, he has legitimate line mates. Do you see 30 to 35 assists? Could you see a 60 point Andrew Kopp season? I could see it. I'm not going to hang my hat on it. I think a 50 point season would be extremely appropriate and more as the bar than anything. What did he have last season? He had nine goals and 33 assists for 42 points. So he beat his single season assists record last season. I would like to see that assist number go up, but I would also like to see that goal number closer to 20, which would then put him likely at a 60 point season. And if you've got Andrew Kopp set going off for 60 points next next year, like we've said over and over again, this is a contending team there that helps helps them become a contending team, because if he's pushing 35 assists, 40 assists, somebody's scoring those goals. Right. So, yeah, we're hoping it's Lucas Raymond. That, that'd be ideal. So you're likely not doing this off your top line with where he's working from, but he could be working it on the power play. Which, but again, could be the second unit, which would be even more fantastic. So I think the baseline should be 2030 at 50. But your hope is that he's getting to a 2040 type season. Now, I think the other number you're going to hope improves and and it should again with healing is the face off number. Yes, that needs to get back to Winnipeg totals. Yeah, last season, his face off totals were 49.8% on the draw. His 2021-22 totals uh, across all teams he played for was 53.2%. But it dipped when he went to New York. That's what worried me. Well, he is still statistically uh, overall a very, very, very strong uh, in the face-off. Uh, over 50% from 2017-18 through the, 20, the first half of the 2021-22 season. He was over 50 percent. I mean, he got as high as 54 percent in in Winnipeg before he was uh, traded. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the other part. You need to win the face offs to gain control. And once a team has control, they can be dangerous. But I think that's another one. I'd like to see the face offs again over over a 51 percent from Andrew Kopp going into next season. Yeah, I think I think that could I I shouldn't say I think I wonder how he does in the face off dot dictates a battle between him and comfort for a second line. I mean, I would maybe say it would depend on whether cop is going to play wing or if he's going to play center, honestly, because I think they may keep cop on a second line and as a winger, because then you could have Michael Rasmussen on your third line as a center. And then your so fourth you line and center. on your second line. Yeah. Yep. With cop, Raymond. 
yeah, cop comfort Raymond cop plays a defensive game. Uh, comfort plays an offensive game. Raymond should bump that numbers back up, but both of them have strong offensive numbers as well. So like cop is a great playmaker. It's evident in his assists. Mm-hmm. If he can set him up, if comfort can set up Raymond, I think that could be a good line as well. Cause you got someone to dig out pucks. You got someone to fire the puck. Yeah. It's, it's going to be really interesting to see how these lines shake out, but I, I would prefer cop at center and that lets you shift comfort to, to third line center, but cop at wing or even comfort wing. Like I think Detroit will probably try to roll it where they have multiple centers on some, uh, some of these lines to really fi- have for one, that depth and two, just keep it that much more flexibility for situational faceoffs. but we'll see. Yeah. So next player I want to talk about is a, another guy that I think, a lot of fans went from I would I, hating is a strong word, but had some dislike for him only because of where he was probably picked versus what Fair. his initial what his initial production was. But Michael Rasmussen has grown on a, a large portion of the fan base, including ourselves. Like I was never really like super down on Rasmussen. But again, people are always going to say, well, he was picked ninth overall. Why is he not performing like a ninth overall pick? And I don't think you can really say that about a, a player performing based on where they were picked because it wasn't his choice. He was picked at nine overall, right? Right. So in 2022, 23 and 56 games played, Michael Rasmussen had 10 goals and 19 assists for 29 points. If you look at his previous season in 2021, 22 in 80 games played, he had 15 goals and 12 assists for 27 points. So he already beat his point total. Uh, in 56 games uh, rather than what he played in 2021-22. So he would have shattered that prior season total too. Yeah, if he didn't shatter his kneecap, he would have yeah, shattered know, details. that prior season total. Um, <laughs> but Michael Rasmussen, also good in the face-off dot, 51% uh, face-off draw percentage. So that's, I mean, he's taking that step forward. I just want to know what Michael Rasmussen's ceiling is. So is Michael Rasmussen a I think he's a right now he's a mid six guy. I think he could play on the second line or third line. Mm -hmm. He could flex up to top line. He's shown that he's got strong defensive abilities. If you look at his uh, J fresh card projected war of 23 percent and EV offensive 52 and EV defensive 46, his finishing needs to go up. Michael Rasmussen is at a 10 percent for finishing. He's got a 55 on the PK. Uh, it's you in the, again, the little bar chart or the little line chart to the right of the, of the numbers, his offense and defense went up. So that's, I think if Michael Rasmussen can continue this, if he can have a 20 goal, 25 assist, 30 assist season, depending on where he's playing. Cause I think he'll probably get power play time as well because he's that net front Holmstrom style dude who just takes up space and can, can get uh, room in tight. I think Rasmussen is a dude who, who's going to take that next step. And I think all, again, all signs point to him taking that step because Iserman is even someone who has called him an integral part of the team. I think he is the player most called out by name by Newsy last season. Yeah. He'd be like, Oh yeah, the guys were great, but let me tell you about Michael Rasmussen. And how amazing Michael Rasmussen was out there. So I think Moose takes a step. And I think that uh, he will endear himself to the fan base even more than he already is. Yeah, I think this is a guy that I think a lot of fans hope that Soda Bloom can become. In terms of, and we've heard the conversation we've talked about. It's been a while since we've talked about Lord Elmer. But um, the work ethic, you know that it's there with Mike Rasmussen. And if Soda Bloom can mimic that you you have your i'm just i'll use the reference going back to the san antonio spurs days you've got your twin towers and it's going to be fantastic because they're both big body good skating what i know maybe we should cool it on the twin towers thing no you you see you're you're you're, uh you're two your giants you got your giants out there your behemoths that's fine you know i i thought about refraining from it but you know it's 22 years removed and I don't joke about those things lightly. So you know how I am, but it's, it's, I think it's an appropriate reference because those are your big boys. And that's who you want to hopefully rely on in the future. You've got two, if, if Elmer can get it figured out, especially this year, I think it's a big year for him um, in Grand Rapids, then you're, you're in a good spot. Raz, 
in particular, though, you hope that he makes that jump. If he, you're seeing a 50 point year out of Rasmussen, then a lot of things have gone right. Is that gonna happen? I, I don't know. I mean, he was definitely he had already surpassed his career high in points last season, which was 27. He got 29 in only 56 games. So if he's on that pace again, that's what. What would that roughly come out to? Let's get the calculator out. He was on a 42 point pace. Not bad, especially if he's going to be your roughly third line center. I, I think if you have that and you know that his two way game has improved tremendously, yeah. which has been extremely important overall. We always talked about how he was like a baby draft out there or baby deer in terms couldn't of the way he, <laughs> he couldn't keep on his feet. And that was a big deal for him. And it finally just clicked, it seemed like this season. And that's what that was extremely important. And now you hope that he comes back this year, healthy, ready to go. You got to think that he's going to be. We've already seen um, Casper at Dev Camp. He had the same injury, the broken kneecap. So you got Raz coming in off the same thing. He's had even more time off to kind of stay away from it all. Should be in a good spot. If that's the case, you're in business. And especially if he's doing it, middle six. Yeah, I think the big thing he's got working in his favor is he's 24 years old. He'll be 25 in April. And you see guys start hitting their ceilings at 25, 26, 27 is where they can start to plateau and, and really work from there. And then their their decline starts in their early-ish 30s. So I think that's what Roy, uh, Michael Rasmussen has going in his favor is that he he has room to grow. I think if yeah. you look, I'm going to pull up his uh, evolving hockey charts as well. In 2021-22, he was an overall 27 with a 34 offense and a 29 defense. This past season in 2022-23, he jumped to a 63 overall with a 52 offense and a 70 defense. So he made improvement. It's just how much more will he improve? And I think, again, it comes with the players that are around him as well. So how much are those players improving? And the next player we're going to talk about is Jonathan Berggren, who could be on a line with Michael Rasmussen. Yeah. And Berggren had a big season already in 2022-23, 67 games played, 15 goals, 13 assists for 28 points. That's a that's a solid rookie season. He's 23 years old. For a while, he was pacing pretty well with some of the top rookies out there. And then things cooled yeah. off. Yeah, and I mean, that's 28 points in 67 games for a rookie with a 15.3 shooting percentage. And that's, I mean, high, very, it's very high, generally not sustainable. But again, he's going to take that step forward. He knows room where he needed to improve. He knows the NHL level now and the guys that are out there playing in, in their, the style of different teams. It's all about learning. So his J Fresh War card has him at a 70% projected war, an EV offense of 46, an EV defense of 37, but his finishing is an 85%. So that's what you like to see when he, when the puck is on his stick and he's taking those shots, he's finishing them, which is fantastic. Uh, his evolving hockey card has him at an overall of 56 with an offense of 59 and a defense of 57. But Ryan, what do you think his ceiling is? I think this is where you need to see a similar, like a Gus Nyquist type in terms of points. So you're pushing that 50, 60 point range. And if you are for a guy that likely as of right now is your a third line winger, you're in a really good spot. I think he's got top six potential. You look at his track record everywhere that he's gone. He's gotten better every single year. When it started in the Swiss league, he got better every year. Now it took him getting completely healthy, which we've talked about in, in the past. And last year he finally did stay healthy and it showed in Grand Rapids what he could do. It showed what he could do when he finally got in, in Detroit. And what I have loved, and I've made a comparison, he's like a Zetterberg light. I get it. They're both Swedes, so it's an easy cop-out comparison. What, what do you got? I think you mean the Swedish league, not the Swiss league. Oh, I'm so, did I say Swiss league? My apologies. Yes, I meant, I meant the Swedish league, SHL. The hockey smarts are there. Getting a full year in the NHL, I think, is going to be huge. And if you've got him progressing with guys like Raz and Raymond and and all these other younger players, you're you're making money because he again, as long if he's healthy, which we say that I think for every single freaking player in the NHL, because you never know what could happen. This team is going to be very dangerous, and I think he's only going to improve. I think that the baseline for him should be 50 points. 
I would like a 25-25. I think a campaign from him would be appropriate, but I wouldn't be surprised again with the 20-30. I would like to see a 55-60. I think it's doable because his playmaking is unreal, but when he actually utilizes his shot, it's dangerous. He's got a very sneaky, quick wrister, and especially when he gets in tight off the slot, it's very difficult to stop. So Yeah, I think it all depends on where he's going to slot into. It's all about minute division as well. Uh, This season, he averaged 13 minutes and 28 seconds of ice time, which is good. And he should stay around there if he's playing a middle six role. I'm hoping he's he's third line is where I'm hoping that Berggren ends up. I'm hoping they don't stick him on the fourth. It's possible, but also with the way Lalone rolls his really bottom nine, Mm -hmm. he can even those minutes out pretty easily. So. Yeah, but I mean, he he still he put up 28 points in 13 minutes of ice time, like yep. in 67 games. That's not bad at all. No, but and I'm saying I think he could get to to a 25 goal, 22 assist season. I'm I'm saying he's probably gonna, he needs to have over 40 points. I think 40 plus yeah. points is the is the range you want Berggren in for his second season. And the kid is smart. I mean, the IQ is oh. off the charts, and he can absolutely do it. And again, this comes with the the evolution of the team. If you're playing him maybe with a Clem Costin who's making more room or you're playing him again with Michael Rasmussen, or you're playing him maybe with Daniel Sprong, who is mm-hmm. also an offensive guy. Great there's, goal scorer. There's more in that lineup where their numbers can all boost each other, which is great. Yeah. So last person we want to talk about tonight is Lucas Raymond. Lucas Raymond is one where Ryan, I read off my list of Ryan. Ryan's like, where's Lucas Raymond? I'm like, I feel like everyone's going to talk about Lucas Raymond in this category because I think it's necessary that Lucas Raymond takes a step forward. But I also think that it's almost it's almost inevitable that he does take that step forward again because of what you've put around him. So Lucas Raymond last season in 74 games played had 17 goals and 28 assists for 45 points. He had a total time on ice uh, average 17 minutes and 23 seconds a night. His shooting percentage was a 12.7 percent which tells me he needs to shoot the puck a lot more. He just needs to fire on net. He's got such a good shot that mm-hmm. if he just takes it, it should go in. Like that's that's something that he's he should be doing on a nightly basis, just firing the puck at the net. He had a projected war of 58% and EV offense of 30, EV defense of 19, a power play of 62, a finishing of 72, uh, drew way more penalties than he took. He had a 92% penalty uh, draw. So Lucas Raymond's a guy where if you look at his 2021-22 card on Evolving Hockey, he had an overall of 68 with an offense of 72 and a defense of 14. But in 2022-23, he had an overall of 25. His offense dipped down to a 29, but his defense did come up to an 18. Mm -hmm. So I think what you need from Lucas Raymond is a huge offensive season. I know that Lalone is trying to preach an entire, like everyone on the team needs to play defense. And I think bulking up will help Lucas Raymond a lot. And it looks like he did. I want, I want a 70 point season out of Lucas Raymond. I want 30 goals, 40 assists. Is that your bar for him this year? That is what I think he can do. I think he has the ability to do a 30, 40. I mean, I, I think that's fair. And if he's going to be getting potentially top line minutes, I mean, with the moves to bring it likely assuming is going to be slotted along Larkin. I think that makes it more difficult for Raymond to bump up there because who's going to be your extra wing or puck protection guy. So I think that's where it makes sense. You see a piranha up there, but I think if you need to go offensive heavy, you can put, Raymond Larkin and to bring it out there and you're not going to be disappointed by it. No. So I think he'll float quite a bit between the top six, but you know that he's going to be out there on the top power play unit. And I think that in particular is where he should really hope to shine. Cause he had this past season, five goals and 14 assists. Those numbers need to go up. Yeah. And I think they will. I mean, you're, you're Larkin Raymond to power play like top power play is going to be very dangerous and i don't care extremely dangerous if it's goals if if you get the assist going up man yeah give us those points and again that means that your team is progressing you're doing better ideally is that the recipe for success who knows hockey's weird and crazy shit happens out there but 
you hope that this is a guy that's going to be popping off for lack of better words. And if they, he does, especially in this top six, the way that things have changed up, the Detroit Red Wings are going to be in a, a really good spot. And if it happens this year, then you're looking into next season when you've likely got a Marco Casper hitting this roster. Now you've got another infusion of young talent. There's a lot of things hinging on this season, kind of making that jump, if you will. Almost like a transitional season, right? I think it is. I think this is the year where do, things have to truly change. I mean, we, we've seen the roster turnover. We know that this is now getting towards what Steve Eiserman is wanting. Does he have a true superstar? Nope. But you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, we were not blessed with uh, two or three top three picks in our we're system. We're not the New Jersey so. Devils or freaking Edmonton Oilers, but Edmonton's the already their own nightmare. They're Buffalo, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Ryan, I think that's what we're going to wrap with tonight. I want to get your final thoughts before we sign off, uh, and then we'll we'll kick it. Final thoughts. We are in probably the worst stretch of the offseason possible. So, yeah, I really don't have any final thoughts. What other Ryan than... means is you're going to get a few really random episodes before training yep. camp starts yep. up. We may need to try to grab somebody to get them on here to talk about some random stuff that's, you know, not boring like us sometimes. Uh, I just set us up for failure in the comment section on that one. But anyways, you can follow me, uh, Ryan 33 yeah, uh, just get ready. I mean, it, it, we say it's slow. It's it's coming up pretty uh, here pretty quickly. You How far are we out from tra- training camp? That's that's, the, that's a few the weeks. One. You're a few weeks away from training camp, so we'll we'll have more stuff coming down the pipe. I still think that Iserman might have one or two more things that he wants to do. Nothing crazy, but again, we're pretty tight on defense right now. Joe Valeno still doesn't have a contract. For less than a month from training yes. camp. So there will be. I think there may still be a couple more news days left before training camp starts. Um, but you can follow me online at Bring the Wing. Follow Grindline Podcast online at Grindline Pod. Follow the Hockey Podcast Network at Hockey Podnet. And then we thank them for hosting us and spreading our podcast around. We give a shout out to Vintage Detroit, which is the only place you should get your Detroit jerseys from and worked on. You should go sub to us on YouTube. See our pretty charts that I put together. Our new layout is beautiful. We've gotten commented several times on it that people love it. Hey. So I will keep doing that. It's really awesome. Throw us a sub. Turn on the notifications. You'll get notified every time an episode goes live. Uh, you can check out our merch on redbubble.com by searching the grind line. And if you use the promo code grind line and Howie's hockey tape, you'll get 10% off. And if you use that same promo code, I'm bringing hockey back. You'll get 12% off. That is going to do it for us tonight. So for Ryan, I am Greg. You stay classy hockey town.